Well, hello everyone and welcome to our chapter one video lecture. Chapter one is an introduction to the field of accounting. So you ready? Let's go. First of all, what is accounting? Accounting is defined as an information system that reports on the economic activities and financial condition of a business or other organization. So what accounting does, it keeps tracks of all of the daily transactions of a business or any other type of organization. What is the role of accounting in our society? Well, accounting allows us to know how we should spend money to harvest food or cure diseases, how should our resources be allocated? Those questions and others such as, should we build computers or cars? Should we invest money in the motor or IBM? These type of questions can be answered by analyzing accounting information. Let's talk about market-based allocation. So what's a market? A market is a group of people or entities organized to exchange items of value. So you think about it, when you go to the market, such as the supermarket, what are you doing? You're exchanging your resources, such as cash, with other resources, such as food, household goods, etc. So there are common terms used, I'm oh, sorry. Common terms used when we have a market-based allocation, their term, those terms are profit, income, and earnings. And we're going to define these different terms to make sure you all understand what is profit. Is profit the same as income? Income the same as earnings? We'll talk more details about these terms. Okay? Now, let's say that you wanted to start your own business. Well, you're going to need some financial resources in order to start your own business. Financial resources, that's a fancy term for money, right? Yes, we know we need money to get started a business and to operate that business. So ask yourself, if I need financial resources, aka money where is the money going to come from well there could be investors people who want to invest into your business with investors they're going to give you those financial resources in exchange for ownership into your business organization or there can be creditors creditors mean that you borrow money when you have creditors they're going to loan you money, but that money had to be paid back along with interest at some point in time in the future. So if I need money, would I rather have investors, people who are going to become poor owners of my business, or would I rather borrow money and have creditors? Send me an email response to that question, please. This is what we call the market trilogy in resource allocation. So let's talk about the resources. These resources could be provide financial, physical, and labor resources to a business. So the resources are going to be sent to the businesses. These resources are going to add value to the actual business. That business then provides goods and services sent to the actual consumers in exchange that business hopes to earn a profit that profit then becomes compensation for the resource owners and don't worry about if you didn't get it all of this right now you're going to hear more about this market trilogy as we go throughout this course okay when it comes to accounting, accounting also provides information to those who are called stakeholders. So who are the stakeholders? Well, the stakeholders are any individuals who have an interest in the financial information of a business. 
So if you want to make a decision about a company, then you are considered a stakeholder of that company. So stakeholders could include <coughs> resource providers, such as investors, financial analysis, brokers, attorneys, government regulators, news reporters, banks, unions, all examples of stakeholders, people who have an interest in the financial information of a business. Now, there's two major groups of accounting information, what we call financial accounting, which we're going to study during the first half of the semester. We'll then switch to managerial accounting after that. So financial accounting focuses on the needs of external users. We're saying, what do those individuals outside the company need to know about our business in order to make decisions about our organization? Managerial accounting focus on internal users. We're now saying, what information does the managers need to run their department? We're talking about things such as budgets, profit, law, things of that nature. So we're going to first focus on financial accounting to focus on the needs of external users, and then we'll switch about halfway through the semester to managerial accounting. Okay. Now, not all entities are in business, per se, to make a profit. They're known as not-for-profit entities. When you are a not-for-profit entity, your main focus is to provide some type of service to the general public. So you may have foundations, religious groups, and various benevolent organizations that prioritize resource usage based upon humanitarian concerns. So again, their focus is not to make a profit, but how can we provide services to our community? Okay? So here we have financial accounting, managerial accounting, nonprofit accounting, and we're asking who are going to be the users of accounting information in these different areas. So this list is not exhaustive, but for financial accounting, of course, investors, creditors, even brokers will have an interest in your accounting information. Managerial accounting is more internal, so now the managers, employees, even the unions, because the unions will negotiate with companies based upon their accounting information. When it comes to nonprofit organizations, again, also they may receive funding from the government, such as grants, things of that nature. So now you're going to have legislation of the citizens who are interested in reviewing the accounting information for these nonprofit organizations. Now, what accounting does. Accounting improves communication. Accounting establishes measurements and reporting rules that businesses use to facilitate communication. What you learn is that there are a set of rules that tell us how to record information, how we should summarize information, can help us to classify information. So we're going to learn more about these accounting rules as we continue throughout this course, okay? So speaking of those rules, there's a group called FASB. FASB stands for the Financial Accounting Standards Board. Again, FASB is the Financial Accounting Standard Board. Their job is to develop the accounting rules, which we call GAAP. GAAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. So what GAAP are, these are the accounting principles, the accounting guidelines. They tell us how to do work within the field of accounting. Every organization must follow these rules when they are recording and measuring their business transaction. We're going to study these rules throughout this course this semester. Okay? Now, until recently, each country developed their own unique gap or their own accounting rules. So if there were 15, 16 different countries, 
each one had their own set of accounting principles, but that became a little confusing. Why is that? Well, because most companies now are global. They do not just deal in one country, but in various countries. So now we have a new set of accounting principles called IFRS. IFRS are the International Financial Reporting Standards. There's a board called the IASB, the International Council Standards Board, that now develops the International Financial Reporting Standards. So now pretty much all of the modern countries outside of the United States uses IFRS as their set of accounting principles. What it does, it provides uniformity when it comes to how companies should record and keep track of their business transactions. Okay? Now, there's what we call public accounting as well as private accounting. So, if you work in public accounting, it means that your firm provides services to the general public. A lot of people in a public account we call certified public accountants, meaning that you have a license that allows you to provide certain type of accounting services, such as doing audit services, tax services, consultant services. When you work in private accounting, it means that you work for a single company, not for the public at large. So think about your place of employment. Does your employer have an accounting department? If so, that's known as private accounting. You may be called a CMA, which is a certified management accountant, which means that you have taken an exam, you have a license to perform certain functions within the private accounting field. It may be what we call a CIA, a certified internal auditor, which allows you to do audit internally, but not on an external basis. So there are a plethora, as I said, plethora of jobs within the accounting profession because every company, every organization, even every individual has some type of accounting needs. So keep that in mind. All right. So what financial accounting does, it disclose the financial activities of particular individuals or organizations described as reporting entities. And each entity was a business or individuals, organizations are going to be treated separately. All right, let's make it personal. Think about yourself, you are an individual. You're going to prepare accounting reports that may show what we call your income that came in along with any expenses. So the income will be the actual money that you earn from providing goods and our services, whereas the expenses will be an outflow of cash used in order to earn any revenue for the actual business. So we're gonna take a look at these different type of accounting reports, mainly prepared for businesses but keep in mind that individuals and organizations will also have their own financial accounting reports. Okay? Now, how do we keep track of a company's different types of business information? One method is what's called the accounting equation. The accounting equation is composed of three elements, assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. You know, three elements are assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. The question is, are you familiar with these three elements that make up the account equation? Okay. Notice to say the stockholders equity is subdivided into two additional elements known as common stock and retained earnings. Question. Are you ready to discuss the account equation? You said yes, but well, great. Well, stay tuned for part two of our chapter one lecture. Bye-bye.